Hello students, welcome to part B of lesson 5.2.1. We're going to continue our discussion of uh, limits and today we're going to specifically be looking at limits as x is approaching infinity or negative infinity. All right, so we're starting um, with number 44, which for you guys is going to be page 240. Two, maybe page 242 um, and they've asked us to sketch one more time one of these functions that we should be getting pretty used to in chapter five these um, rational functions vertical and horizontal asymptotes the whole whoop whoop deals um, I've graphed already for us the asymptotes here a shift to the right by four and a shift down by one okay right by four down by one so we should be pretty comfortable with these two uh, asymptotes, vertical and a horizontal here. And then the top number this time is actually a two. So that's gonna lead me to a little bit different coordinate points that I'm gonna graph from the intersection of my asymptotes. Remember, from the intersection of the asymptotes, which is like my new origin point, I'm gonna go two in the X, one in the Y, or maybe, one in the x, two in the y, or both of those things negative. Negative two, negative one, or negative one, negative two. All right, so I'm gonna plot those four points over here, and I'm gonna do it a little bit bigger like that. So let's see, from there, one, two, one, like right there. 1, 1, 2 would be like right there. This one, 1, 1, 2 would be here. And this one, 1, 1, 2 would be there. All right. And then I will connect, make my graph from this point to that point like that. This point down to this point along that asymptote there. This one goes up along the asymptote and gets real close. This one comes down along the asymptote and gets real close. All right, so here we have the function that they wanted us to graph. Okay, please do make sure that we're always reading directions. Um, sometimes homework problems ask you to sketch a function first and then a question about it. If you just answer the question, it's not really what I'm looking for. Um, okay, so I've sketched the function and then they have three limit statements for me. And the first one is really the one that we're gonna focus on for the remainder of this video. Um, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna list out the three that they have there. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about each one, but then we'll focus really in on the first one on part A. So part A says the limit as X approaches infinity. Okay, so we make the little infinity symbol there of this function F of X, right? This function, we know the function, but we do always wanna say that we are taking the limit of a certain function. So the limit of this function as x approaches infinity. All right, so what I want you to think about here is x is getting really, really, really big, okay? So you can sort of think of this infinity as like 100 million, okay? So as the x value of my function is approaching 100 million or 100 billion or 100 trillion, what is happening to the y value, okay? Essentially, if we remember from our discussion um, in our last video, just about the bugs that we were putting on our functions, right? If we put a bug on the function here and we give them a couple of legs, a couple of antenna, right? And we make the bug walk this way, positive in the X, and we make him keep walking forever out to infinity on the X axis. What Y value does he think he's going to get to when he gets to infinity? Now, I know he can't really ever get to infinity, but if you were to ask the bug, okay, you're walking along the curve, where do you think you're gonna get when X gets to infinity, okay? He's gonna answer in this case, a Y value of negative one. He's gonna answer a Y value of negative one. Because remember what our function is doing here, as we uh, go further and further in the X, right? Uh, this function is approaching that horizontal asymptote, okay? And we can sort of see that in this function back here as well. Right, so I want you to look at the function now, and I want you to imagine putting in for x a very, very large value, 100 million, 100 billion, 100 trillion, something like that. 
if you were to take 100 billion and minus four, hopefully we can agree that it's still a very, very big number, just south of 100 billion, right? Then if you were to do two divided by that giant number, 99 billion, 999 million, 999,996, two divided by that number is going to be extremely small insanely small like so small we can't even comprehend it um, to the point that if you were to do that on a calculator i would guess if they didn't give you some crazy scientific notation the calculator might just say zero okay it might just say that number is so small that it doesn't matter at all okay so when we put a giant x value in here um this whole piece two divided by x minus four basically becomes a big zero okay it's basically nothing so then the function's value just says zero minus one. Zero minus one. Zero minus one is negative one. So that's why our limit as x is approaching infinity and getting very, very, very large is negative one, okay? We can either see it on the graph because of the horizontal asymptote, or uh, we can see it here from our function, okay? Um, by the way, we can also have limits at negative infinity. Okay, if we had this limit at negative infinity, that would be, you know, a bug over here on the function heading that way. And we believe uh, the same thing, right? If we let X get gigantically big, but in the negative direction, negative 100 billion, for example, if we were to put that into our function, the same thing applies, right? You'd have two divided by a gigantic negative number, but a gigantically negative number two divided by a gigantic negative number is still basically zero. It's just a little bit negative instead of just a little bit positive, but either way, essentially nothing. So therefore we have essentially nothing minus one. So this would also be negative one, okay? But just keep that in mind that you will see both of these limits um, in your practice problems. Um, now the other things that number 44 want us to do just to keep fresh and on top of things, uh, they want us to do a one-sided limit for this function as x approaches four from the negative, okay? Four from the negative and um, of, of f of x, of course. And remember that this one-sided limit means I'm approaching an x value of four, but I'm approaching it from the bottom side. I'm a little bit less. That's what our minus sign here means. I'm a little bit less than four and approaching four. So in this case, that would be like this blue bug if I were to just turn it around and make it walk this way, right? I'm below x equals four, which is right here, and I'm walking towards x equals four. What does the bug think is gonna happen when it gets to x equals four? Well, it realizes that it's about to go over the, the waterfall, right? It's in a barrel heading over Niagara Falls. So the limit as x approaches four from the negative side, of this particular function, because four is my vertical asymptote, this from the negative side is going down to a limit of negative infinity, okay? So this limit actually equals negative infinity because my y value is going down and it's unbounded, what we call it, it's unbounded. It, it has no lower bound, it's never gonna stop going down. Okay, and then, then letter C of number 44 wants us to do the same thing but but come from the positive side okay so they want to limit as x approaches four from the positive side of uh, f of x okay and that equals well that would be this blue bug turning around and going this way he's climbing mount everest right he's going up as he approaches x equals four from the positive side he's going up uh, without bound he's never going to stop going up so we consider that limit to be infinity okay that limit to be infinity. Now, one quick uh, notation thing before we go on to number 45, which we don't need a graph for, um, but I wanna make sure everybody is clear on this. When we write a limit expression, um, I want you guys to think about it sort of like this. Okay, the stuff underneath the limit that X approaches whatever, that's generally supposed to be really small. It's like a subscript, okay? So, so don't make it the same size as what you're, when you're writing limit and, and then the function that you're putting in. It should look something like this, limit as x approaches 
uh, we're going to do a lot of these in 45, okay? So the limit of f of x, and then in little letters down below, it says x approaches infinity. Okay, that's like a subscript, um, sort of like an exponent, but the opposite. Um, we've seen that when we've done like x with a little two on it, okay? Same idea. Subscript two, not an exponent two, but subscript two, okay? So just make sure that we have that notation down and we're writing our limits uh, properly. Okay, so now our limit, our limit expressions in number 45. They ask us to do four of them, and then they ask us to uh, discuss something about letter D, but in, in doing letter D, we're gonna have to do that discussion, so I'm not real worried about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a few limit statements here. I've connected my X approaches. So I've got four of them, and the first one in part A, has a limit of x approaching infinity. Actually, all of these have a limit of x approaching infinity. And the first function is a rational function, right? We've got a fraction going on there. And it says three over x to the third power. So what I want you guys to think about for a second is when I have a fraction like that where just my x is in the denominator of the fraction, it, as x approaches infinity, meaning x gets extremely large, what's happening to this fraction? Specifically, which part of the fraction is getting bigger? Right, well, uh, like I just showed you there with my cursor, the denominator is what's getting bigger here, right? The denominator is getting very, very large because if we imagine putting uh, some gigantic x value in there, maybe 100 billion or something, 100 billion to the third power is, is even bigger than 100 billion, right? So three divided by something insanely large, um, this limit is going to approach nothing, right? If I have three pizzas and I tried to give some to every person in the entire world, everybody would pretty much get no pizza, okay? It's, it's just nothing. There's zero there. So there's no value of x that's actually going to make this function equal zero. So that's why we need to be clear on the difference between a limit and uh, the value of a function, okay? So there's no value that's actually gonna make this zero because three divided by any gigantic number is still slightly above zero. But eventually, as we get closer to infinity, we just consider the limit to be zero because it's a three being divided by something huge, okay? So we'll, we'll sort of keep uh, in mind our, you know, like one over tiny equals big, one over big equals tiny sort of thing going on here, all right? Now our next limit in letter B has uh, this function. It has five X to the fourth power, okay? This is not a fraction, five X to the fourth power. This uh, limit going to infinity, if you imagine putting a gigantic number in for X here, 100 billion to the fourth power is a lot bigger than 100 billion, and then we multiply it by five, and now it's five times bigger than whatever that gigantic number just was. So in this case, because we don't have any fractions or anything else going on, it's just a polynomial function. These types of polynomial functions, as limits go to infinity, their, their, their limits are just gonna equal infinity. Okay, and we can see that if we just sketch a quick little graph of this, because this function uh, would look like a parabola. Okay, uh, like something like this. And so as X is going this way, right? X is going this way for forever. What's happening to the Y value? Well, the Y value is right here, right? It's going up. It's going up forever and it's never gonna stop. It's never gonna turn around. It's just gonna keep going up and up and up and up. So that's why we say the limit as X goes further to the right, closer to infinity, um, this function's limit is infinity, okay? Uh, letter C, we have an interesting one. It says negative nine over X. Okay, so now this one's, everything's in the negative, right? Because my X values are, are positive. Uh, so negative nine over two or negative nine over 200 or negative nine over 3000 or negative nine over whatever. What happens to this function as the X value goes to infinity? What Y value do we approach as X, goes to infinity. Well, it's very similar to letter A, 
right? The only difference is we don't have a third power and this one's negative. But I mentioned up above that it doesn't really matter if we uh, go positive infinity or negative infinity in terms of what's happening to this fraction, right? If I let X be 100 billion, then this fraction now says negative nine divided by 100 billion. So yes, that's slightly negative, slightly below zero, but as X gets larger and larger and larger, this is going to approach zero. Now it's going to approach zero from the negative side, whereas letter A is going to approach zero from the positive side and come down, but the limit is the same, okay? The limit is the same. When you have a function where you have a value or a number over something with an X, as X goes to infinity, that function is gonna to go to zero. All right, now letter D. The interesting one for us is letter D, okay? Uh, letter D says the limit as X approaches infinity of sine of X, okay? Now this is a function that we dealt with a lot in chapter four, and um, we should, be somewhat familiar with what the graph of this function looks like, okay? But just to refresh our memories, I'm gonna sketch it real fast for you. Okay, this is not gonna be a great sine function, but it would look something like this. It'd start at zero, zero, and it would do this. Right, up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down like that forever, okay? So if we think about this function as x approaches infinity, this periodic function, what, what y value are we approaching as x goes to infinity? Well, as we keep going to infinity, we're gonna keep going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And we can keep doing this forever, forever and ever and ever and ever. The x value going to infinity does not really affect what's happening to my y values here, right? My y values are gonna keep oscillating back and forth, back and forth. So this limit, you guys, as x approaches infinity, this is one that we say, does not exist, okay? D-N-E, does not exist. Why does it not exist? Because my Y value is not approaching any specific value, okay? It's not approaching anything. It's going between negative one and one, negative one and one, bouncing back and forth and doing that oscillating thing forever. So there is no limit of this function. The limit just doesn't even exist, okay? That's slightly different than what we had in letter B where the limit was infinity. That one was just going up forever and it wasn't, wasn't changing or oscillating or going back and forth or anything like that. So that one we do label the limit as infinity, the limit equals infinity, okay? That's different than the limit does not exist because it keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Um, I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys have any questions about limits going to infinity, either from graphs or from equations, please let me know. Um, I did ask you to do 46, I believe, and then a couple more uh, practice problems from this section. Um, and then we will be ready to move on to our next section. We will uh, continue doing limits uh, more in chapter five and then again in chapter eight we get back to a lot of these kinds of limits and we get to do some more interesting things with them so hang tight for that um, we will get some chapter eight stuff here before the end of the year so if you have questions please reach out to me email phone zoom office hours are all available um, otherwise that's all i have for you right now and we'll talk to you soon